G'day, Jim Harnwell here from Fishing World magazine. I'm down fishing the lower reaches of the Shoalhaven River with my old buddy Sam Bailey in uh, Sam's flash new boat, the Skeeter ZX20. Um, right. Sam works for Bass and Milliard. They're a Sydney based tackle company, bring in a lot of uh, American lures, uh, also make some pretty famous Australian ones, classic lures and so forth. What we're planning to do today is run through a few techniques for fishing uh, particular estuary environments. Um, and we're going to uh, highlight a couple of lures that you can use uh, in these situations and uh, detail how you can use them and what sort of species you can uh, expect to catch. The first environment we're going to fish is basically a, a shallow flat, a sand flat. Uh, it's about, what, five or six foot here deep at the yeah, moment? Yeah, about six foot deep. Six yeah. foot deep. Yeah. So the sort of fish you'd expect to find in this sort of location, you know, your whiting, your brim, your flathead. And we've got two different lure types that we want to show you here. I've got on the Rebel Pop R in a nice clear pattern. I like this clear look because it looks a lot like a prawn. And the fish I'd be chasing with this lure are your whiting. This is a really good whiting lure. Uh, your brim and even flathead will take a popper. There's a couple of different retrieve techniques. One is a fast erratic retrieve, which the whiting really like. And the other one's a slower, more bloopy sort of retrieve, which the brim seem to uh, go on. And what lure you got on, mate? Uh, I've also got a, a lure from the Rebel Stable. This is the original crawfish. It's probably about 30 years old, this lure. It's an old Aussie favourite. Um, it was probably one of the first lures to be seriously used when uh, lure fishing for brim took off in Australia. It's one of my favourite lures to use over shallow, sandy areas, over the flats. Um, it's also a good snag lure, but uh, it imitates a yabby really well, which is one of the major food sources on these sand flats. These are a great little lure, catches just about everything in the estuaries. Uh, this is a deeper diving version. We're fishing in five to six feet of water here. Um, th this will get down probably just above the bottom. Um, expect to catch a lot of flathead, a few brim, and we catch more than the odd whiting on these lures as well, so they're a great little choice. They really, um, really do match a yabby, don't they? Oh, mate, they're great. And as we all know, flathead, brim, and whiting, the three bread and butter species in the estuary, all love eating yabbies. They so. certainly do. They're a great bait. And uh, this flat here has actually got quite a lot of yabby holes on it, so it makes sense to choose a, a lure that really looks like the, the, the main prey item, item, doesn't it? Matching the hatch, I believe we're trying to achieve here. Yeah, yeah, well that's, that's pretty right. So what sort of retrieve would you use for the, uh, the crawfish, mate? Okay, there's a, a few, probably two major retrieves that we generally use with these. Uh, the first is basically what's called a slow roll or just a straight wind. So you just cast your lure out, um, allow it to rest, and it's basically just a matter of slowly winding the handle. You'll feel the lure vibrating through the tip of the rod, and as long as you've got just enough speed in your winding to, to get that little vibration happening, uh, that's quite a deadly retrieve. The slower the better, just as long as you've got that action. The other alternative, which I generally find myself using more often than not, is just a slow twitch and pause, which is um, a, probably the most common retrieve when lure fishing with hard bodies or soft plastics. And it's just a matter of a couple of, two or three twitches of the rod tip, allow the lure to pause. Now this is actually a floating lure, so it will rise slowly in the water when you let it pause there for a second, which is generally when the brim will hit your lure, you'll be retrieving the lure, allow it to pause, and as it rises up, the brim will smack it. So that's probably the best all-round retrieve, particularly over the shallows. Um, another alternative is just a slow draw of the rod. Stop it and allow it to pause, wind up the slack, just a, a slow draw again. That slower draw action is a good, uh, good way to catch brim on lures. Um, I prefer the more erratic twitching for, for flathead and whiting. They seem to be a little bit more aggressive than the brim, so... How about the poppers, Jim? Well, mate, um, I'm pretty keen on catching a whiting today, but I'm not sure if the, the prawns aren't really on just yet. Um, so I, I prefer to fish for whiting when the prawns are really running, but I'm, you know, I might snag one. The retrieve I like for when I'm chasing whiting over the flats is actually a really fast retrieve. You wouldn't think that a fish like a whiting would attack a lure that's actually been su wound in quite Surprisingly quickly. aggressive, aren't they? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. But, you know, I, I like to keep this sort of rod tip wiggle, and that sort of makes the, the lure jump around and, and throw up little splashes of water. Uh, one of the things I learned when I was first starting out in this whiting and, and popping stuff was actually, when I saw a whiting behind the lure, I'd stop, and then they'd just peel away. Mm. You've got to keep going. Uh, if you don't keep going, 
they, they'll just they'll lose interest and go away. But you actually you can see them come up behind your, your lure, and you sort of keep whining, keep whining, keep whining, and then eventually they smack it. It's bizarre stuff. Mm, you wouldn't mm. think a whiting would do it, but they do. They love it. So that really is sort of erratic, uh, sort of popping retrieve, quite quite fast. For the brim, they they'll hit that retrieve. There's no drama about that. They'll hit it for sure. But I find that uh, if you um, employ a slower, uh, perhaps more erratic retrieve with a few pauses and bloops, they'll often come up, uh, they'll be attracted by the lure as it's moving along, and when you pause it, they'll, they'll actually come right up to it and, and eyeball it, and then when you give it another bloop, they just whack it. So it's a, two completely different retrieves. Mm, mm. Similar to the hard body shallow diving lures, I guess, it seems to be that pause is the key to getting the brim yeah, to Yeah, the brim, uh, I'm yeah. not sure what it is, but they, they, they love that pause. And sometimes you can pause it, pause it, pause it, give it the tiniest little tweak, and they'll just smack it. It's good fun. What do you got, mate? Oh, I think it might be a, yeah, a nice little flatter. Yeah, a little flatty, yeah, cool. Pretty typical of the sort of fish you'll catch here on the flats using these little hard bodies. Yeah, well, there you go, they do like eating nippers, so. There we go, the lure's out. A little rebel crawfish, nice little dusky flathead. Another couple of years and he'll be uh, well and truly legal. Okay, we're fishing, uh, fishing snags now. Uh, snags are a pretty common uh, form of structure in estuary, most estuary systems. Most commonly made of fallen trees. These ones along the bank here have fallen in over past floods and they create ideal habitat for a range of species including uh, bass, brim, estuary perch, flathead lie around on the bottom of the snags. You get the odd dewfish moving through these sort of areas as well. I like this area for estuary perch. And uh, I guess the key thing with fishing snags, or lure fishing with snags, is casting accuracy. Would you agree, Sam, that you, you really need to get your lure into the snag? Particularly with species like your estuary perch and, and freshwater, the bass and, and brim and everything like that, they, they hang really tight to the snag and that sometimes they'll be right under the branches just looking up and they'll just sit there and hold in the current. And unless you're getting your lure right in on top of them, they, they won't come out of the snag to hit it. But if you get your lure right into the little hole in the branches, they'll hit it straight away. So accuracy is very important with your casting um, when you're doing this sort of snag-based fishing. Lure I've selected to use here in these particular snags is one of the new Warlocks. Yeah, we're both using a, a 52 mil Warlock. Um, it's a new Warlock 52 Pro series that we're working on. Um, they're a little bit different to our regular Warlock lures in that we've redone the colour range to be more suitable for brim, uh, trout. We've got three trout patterns. This is the brook trout. I actually like it for this snag based fishing even in the salt water because it's quite a dark green with a black back but the little white spots really stand out in this darker water. Um, it's a good colour for bass and estuary perch as well as the trout. Jim's got a new little colour that is basically an imitation of a, a small yabby or prawn. We've developed these new colours uh, to be specific for this style of fishing and Australian species basically. I like a, a hard body that dives fairly quickly and reasonably deep. For this, Even though the water's quite shallow, you know, it's probably a couple of metres over there, I like a lure that gets right down. Yeah, uh, they, these, these lures that we're it. using, these dive to three metres. Uh, we've also got a two metre version, but uh, as with all of our Australian designed lures, that, as Jim said, they're designed to dive quickly. So rather than casting into the snag and getting your lure to its operating depth halfway back to the boat, these lures are designed to get right down to their proper depth as close as possible to where you've cast them. So it's an important thing to have. Now Sam, uh, everyone's got their own sort of favourite techniques for fishing these sort of uh, woody, timbery snags. I like, uh, I like to cast as close as I can to the actual snag. Um, you know, preferably if there's some branches, I like to get in between those branches. Um, when I know that there's brim and EPs around, I, I don't usually let the lure settle, but if I know there's bass, I, I let it settle for a couple of seconds before I begin the retrieve. But I like to crank it down so it's getting to its operating depth, and then pause. And then uh, I'm presuming these lures are sort of a neutral buoyancy so they rise up again? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're a floating lure. Floating lure, um, yeah. 
and if, if you do cast too far into the snag and you feel it bump on the way out, if you pause them and, and let them stop and even throw a little bit of slack line at the lure, if you haven't struck at it, you'll actually find that the most times, nine times out of ten, they'll, they'll actually float backwards up and off the snag and you should be able to keep winding them in. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, to not to strike at a snag when you feel them because quite often when you're fishing a twitching retrieve you'll hit a snag and think it's the fish but uh, if you can hold off from striking on them these you know floating positively buoyant lures you'll actually be able to get them back more often than not. Oh I'm on. Oh you got one mate. Oh. Little EP. He just just hit it out when I was bringing it in. There you go. <laughs> Look at him. He's cool taking that fish aren't they? Taking that little warlock. Yeah we probably thought it was a prawn. Yes. There you go, EP on a warlock. Anyway, mate, you better go home, hey? Good stuff. He's off. Well, guys, I hope this uh, short video has helped you uh, in some of your lure fishing for estuary species. Um, we covered the flats with poppers and with uh, you know, yabby imitations and uh, fishing snags here with deep divers. Check out the Bassamilliard range. They've got a, a stack of lures, Australian made ones and also um, American ones. So uh, a lure for every choice. Sam, thanks very much. No problems, Jim, thank you.